All right, we're doing the review. We are up to, what are we up to? 22. Okay, let's see how many we can get done on this one. 22. I'm going to go a little faster on these. 22, 81 minus 3 to the third power times 2. Orders of operation. No parentheses. Need to do the exponent. 3 to the third power. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27 times 2. Need to do this one next. 8 minus 54 and your final answer is 27 23 lowest common denominator least common multiple least common multiple of 7 4 and 2 least common multiple well let's see 4 is a multiple of 2 so I really only have to think of 4 and 2 there's a couple ways to go with this. Some people just start going, okay, four times one is four, four times two is eight, four times three is 12, four times four is 16, four times five is 20, four times six is 24, four times seven, oops, 28. There is nothing smaller than multiplying them by each other. Uh, if I'd used the other method, I would have found that a little faster. Um, the other method says take each of them and prime factor them. Um, notice that they have no common factors. So that means your L, least common multiple is all of them multiplied together, which is the 28, okay? So this method works. What if you had six and eight, least common multiple? Six is a two and a three. Eight is a two, a two, a two, and a three. They have a two in common, so the least common multiple would use what they have in common one time. You can't multiply, if you multiply 6 times 8, you're going to get 48. That is not the least common multiple. Okay, let's find out what the least common. They have a 2 in common, and then it's 1 of everything else. So this is 8. Um, wait, wait, wait. Where'd that come from? <laughs> Sorry. I just want to go up script. Uh, they have this in common, and then they have these left. So this is 8 times 3. So the least common multiple is 24 of these two. Okay. So you can't always just multiply them together. The least common in this case would be 24. You use what they have in common once, and one of everything else they don't have in common. Okay, that's the rule for that. Um, let's see. 24... 3 over 4 to the 4th power. That is the same as um, 3 to the 4th times 3 to the 4th times 3 to the 4th times 3 to the 4th. You don't have to do it that way if you don't want. What is 3 to the 4th power? 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 9 is 81. Okay. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 16 is 256. If there's nothing in here that can reduce, then this is not going to reduce, even though they're big numbers. That is my final answer. Do not give me a decimal. Okay. 25. Uh, last week you worked 36 hours and you earned a total of 324. What is your hourly pay? Um, most people can figure this out. Um, I think the easiest thing to do is do 324 divided by 36. Okay, now that is, that's all I need for an equation. If you're thinking, I want to show you how that's, an, that's a proportion, okay? If this is dollars, I want, and this is hours, then this is dollars and this is hours, all right? 
So if you get 324 for 36 hours, how many do you get for one hour? And you can cross multiply and solve. But um, so that would be 324 and that would be 36 X divided by 36. That's where that comes from, okay? But if you just give me this, that's the same thing. X equals $9 an hour, okay? 26 says write all the factors of 24. 24, use commas to separate them. Factors of 24. Well, one is the factor, here, let me make a factor tree. 24, it's even, so two goes into it. Um, 12 times, two and six, two and three. So this is two times two times two times three is the prime factorization of 24. To get the factors, you do all the different combinations of these factors. So is there a two in a 24? Yes, there is. Is there a three in a 24? Yes, there is. Is there a four? There is, okay? Is there a six? Well, there's no five. So there's a six, no seven. How about an eight? That's eight, okay? Uh, nine, no, 10, no, 11, no, 12, yes, and 24. Those are the factors of 24. All the different combinations of these factors here, okay? Some people find it very helpful to do factor pairs, one and 24, two and 12, three and eight, four, and six. So that's, notice those in that order are your different factors, okay? Uh, 20, 27. 27 says, writes an algebraic expression for the following, the sum of five and a number. Does it say the sum? It says the sum. Uh, so the key is wrong, <laughs> sorry, um, on, so the sum of five and a number is that. What's, what's that times that or that times that? That's the product, sorry about that, versus sum. That should be that. Ooh. Let me take a minute and... Write that down. Sorry, give me a second. Sorry, I'm going to fly with a post it note here. Gracious. All right, so we're doing this kind of fast. Sorry. 28. Where's the page? 28. There we go. Negative 18 plus 12 minus 3 minus 5. Orders of operation. Don't touch that. Don't touch that. This is going to be a negative 2, right? Um, 3 minus 5 is the same thing as 3 plus a negative 5. However you want to think about it, your answer is negative 2. I have more negatives. I think your book says if you have a positive and a negative, you have a positive and a negative, and the negative one's bigger, your answer has a negative sign in front. Okay? So if you have a negative, negative 2... I tell people to make one big plus because a negative negative is a positive. So negative 18 plus 12, negative one times a negative two is a positive two. So that's going to be 14, uh, that's, that's a negative four, okay? And 29. One half minus one over ten. I need an LCD. I need a lowest common denominator. What can do? 
Can I use the 10? I can use the 10 because two is a factor of 10. So these have to be both 10, which means I keep that one. How do I change one half into something with a 10 on the bottom? 10 divided by two is five. So two times five is 10. One times five is five. So a half is five tenths, right? You don't have to do all this if you just know a half is five tenths, but that's the process. So you can freak out anything. Then five minus one is four over 10. Four over 10 needs to be reduced because they're both even. That's my final answer, okay? Absolute values, let's see. Absolute value of a negative three plus seven minus 15. The absolute value of a negative three is a positive three. How do I know that? Uh, absolute values tell you the distance, the distance, the number of units, one, two, three, gets you to zero from a negative three. One, two, three gets you to zero from here. So the absolute value of a negative three equals the absolute value of a positive three. They're both three, okay? Because absolute values are distances. They're always positive. They're how far away something is from the other. All right, so you add all these together. Um, notice, I, notice I say add all these together. It's um, how I say it. Um, but you're still subtracting if you want to say 3 plus 7 minus 15 is the same as adding 3 plus 7 and adding a negative 15. Okay, they're all the same. Um, this is a negative 5, I believe. Is an equivalent fraction statement, which is the same thing as a proportion. A ratio equals another ratio is a proportion. Um, there are also equivalent fractions. What is 175? What is 175 divided by 35? Um, or you can cross multiply, which is what I did on the paper there. But I prefer to think of it as a Equivalent fraction, 175 divided by 35 is 5. It took 5 times 35 to get that, so this would be times 5, so x would be 60. That works for me. You can also do cross multiply, so x times 35 is 35x, and then 12 times 175 is 2100. Really? Let me check that. 12 times... 175, yep, divide both sides by 35, x does equal 60, either way. Next 32 is, what is, what is 45% of... 36. 45% is a decimal is 0.45 of, is a multiplication sign, is, is an equal sign, um, 36. So what is 0.45 times 36? 16.2. Uh, there are other ways. There's a proportion way to do that that doesn't bring to mind, but you can do it the proportion way if you so choose. Um, equivalent fractions, 45 over 56 equals 8 over 10. And the question is, do they? Um, well, a couple ways to do that. Um, couple ways to do that. Let's see. I can cross multiply. That would be the, probably the easiest way. 4, 5, 4, 50, and then 56 times 8. 8 is 448, so I'm thinking they're not equivalent fractions, so no. Um, also, you can't get 56 divided by 10 is 5.6. 45 divided by 8 is 5.625. So that can't be right. Okay, not equivalent. Uh, 34 
um, 5 over 7, 75 over 100. Which one is greater? That is a less than symbol. That's a greater than symbol. Um, let's see. Some people talk about the Pac-Man or the alligator version of that. <laughs> let's go with the Pac-Man with that. Uh, teeth are showing, which brings into mind the alligator. That always faces the larger one because it's afraid, right? So it's going to show its teeth. So this is the large number on this side and the smaller number over here. It doesn't care about the small one. It's always afraid of the big one. Okay, so that's a greater than however you want to remember it. <laughs> so it, you can do this in a couple of ways. Can you reduce this? Reduce this by five. Um, oops, 20. I don't know that does a bunch for me. I just like to divide. Five, um, five divided by seven is 0.71 blah blah blah. 75, most people remember that as three quarters, which is 0.75. So this is clearly the greater one is the three quarters. Think about it. 75 out of 100 is three quarters of something. 75 cents out of a dollar is three quarters of a dollar. Five sevenths is more than half. Half of seven Half of seven is 3.5, so five is more than a half. Um, but is it three quarters? I don't know. Uh, it's, um, you can also come up with a like denominator. There's a couple ways to do that, but that would be, sorry, we're in a hurry today. So that's, uh, let me know if you need help figuring that one out. Um, 35 is uh, 0 0.75 as a fraction in its simplest form. That's the hundredths place. All right, hundredths. So this is 75 over 100. Um, in its simplest form, we just did that up there. Um, I would divide by 25 quarters. Think quarters. Three fourths. Seven. Um, eight. Wait. 0.75 is a fraction. 36. 35. Hang on. Something wrong on the key. Oh, I see. 0.75 is a fraction. Oh, that's 30. Wait. I skipped 35. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is 36. Um... What was 35? Right in numerical sense. 75 thousandths. 75 se I'm sorry. 35. 75 thousandths. See the THS on the end? 0 0.075. It's got to end up in the thousandths spot. Okay, not the hundredth spot, but the thousandth spot. So that answer is 35. Um, 36 says, what is this as a fraction? 37 is 5 over 4 as a percent. A um, couple ways to do that one. Um, you can divide 5 by 4 and get 1.25. Um, or you can say, how do we get to 100? Um, this was times 25, so this times 25 would be 125, which is 125%, because anything over 100 is a percent, okay? Um, but you can do 5 divided by 4 gives you 1.25, and then you multiply by 100 to go from a decimal to a percent. So either way, 38, I'm missing port of opera, oops. Operations, I'm running out of time. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, 15. 15 plus 0 0.23 times 4, 15. 
They're trying to be complicated. Let's see. Do it's in the parentheses first. Within the parentheses, I have an exponent. That means I'm not touching this. If I just shove it next to that, that's the same as multiplying, right? So 16 minus 15, 15 plus 0 0.231, which is the same as itself. So 15 plus point oh, whoops, point, ah, point two three is 15.23. That was a weird problem. Okay, and 39. We do by hand. Uh, 31.915. Sorry, in a hurry now. 40. 25, 6. Right is a mixed number. What is 25 divided by 6? 25 divided by 6. However, you want to do this. Um, 24 remainder. So this would be 3 and 1. Six, four, because I can't multiply. Four, four times six is 24, right? Three times six is 18. Four times six is 24. One remainder, four and one six. I am proving to you that you should not be doing this in a rush, okay? <laughs> um, Linda and Juan went shopping. Linda spent $24 less than Juan spent. Write an algebraic expression for how much Linda spent. Linda spent $24 less than. Less than is a key word that means things are out of order. So that means I wouldn't put the 24 first. So I don't know what he spent. So X equals what one spent. So X minus 24 is what Linda spent. Okay, good luck on the test.